Alright everyone, hello and welcome back to another video, or welcome if this is your first time here. In today's video, I'm going to be covering basic grips. By the way, this is just going to be covering uh, grips and their settings. This isn't going to be going over like how to make a prop fully. I'll put that video up in the top right corner or in the description below. So let's start with the capsule, since we've already kind of seen this one before, it's less intimidating. But yeah, as you can see, I have this hand here and like these blue rings. Um, this is part of the grip gizmo. This is like a quality of life feature. I'll put that down in the description below if you want to get it for yourself. It's very helpful for creating like cylinder grips and sphere grips. Let's go over these main options up top. So yeah, everything up top will be the same for all of these components. It's down here is when things get different. So, uh, this grip hand gizmo options you won't have if you don't have the grip gizmo installed, which I do recommend you get. Uh, it just shows the hand, or you can turn that off, and this shows the slide of the hand. Now the slide isn't really accurate, because you can't really slide your hand along this, it's too, too narrow of a limit. So, for the first options, is throwable? You for sure want this on, so you can actually throw it when you let go of it. Um, and ignore grip target on attach. I always keep this off. You want the target to be there. Additional grip colliders, you could put other grip colliders in here. Like say if you had multiple grips, you could put them in here. I don't really do this. It's kind of up to personal preference whether you do this or not. Hand with amplify curve. Okay, so I don't know this one too well, but what I've gotten from this one is whenever you grab something, this is how fast the object will interpolate into your hand. So say this would be, it goes into your hand at a steady pace this means it slowly goes in your hand and it speeds up over time this is a very small option so i usually just set it to something like this most players aren't really going to notice anything in game here hand pose this is the meat and potatoes of it all this is where you choose what hand pose you want so let's say this was a glock mag you could choose a glock mag grip which you can't really see because the hand is inside of the cylinder but yeah, it's kind of like a mag hold. But for a cylinder, you probably want to do something like cylinder grip, small, large, or I think barrel grip also works. From what I know, sometimes hand poses can mess up the grip. Like with a target grip, if you use a pinch grip, I think it is, it can kind of mess stuff up. I don't know, that's just from my experience. For the primary movement, I do Z on the one, and for the secondary movement, I do X on the one, or one on the X. Again, this hasn't affected me much. These are just the default val values that I use. Grip options, this is pretty important. So nothing means you can't grip it. Everything means, probably don't do everything, probably just choose from one of the four. Multiple hands means you can grab it with both of your hands, uh, no matter which one it's in. Toggled grip is usually used for weapons. I'm, again, I haven't used that one too much. Bar hover, never used it, never seen it used. Switch hands means you have to let go of it with one hand before you can hold it with the other. You cannot hold it with multiple hands. I usually just do multiple hands, but switch hands is also a very handy one too, for like very small things. Priority, this is pretty important. So if the priority is one, that means it's important. If it's anything below one, that means it's very important. If it's anything above one, that means it's not as important. Think of the phrase first priority. If, you're, if something is your first priority, then you will do it first. So it's it's taking that same concept and applying it here. This would be first priority in a grip. So let's say you had two grips right here. This one had third priority and this one had first priority. Uh, if you put your hand in the middle, it would grab this one first. But if you put your hand up slightly, it would grab this one. So that's pretty much what priority is. If there's a whole bunch of grips, it'll grab the one with the highest priority. Minimum break force and maximum break force. This is usually set to infinite, um, but if you want something to be let go of when you like pull on it hard enough, then you would set these to be like 1200 to 2500 or something like that. Again, these are just values you can kind of play around with. Infinity is just the default, at least for me. Default grip distance. This is how far away you can grab it. I, again, this is always set to infinity. Anything lower, you have to be really, really close up to grab this. So I usually just set it to infinity. Radius. Okay, this is where the grip gizmo comes in handy. Because as you can see, if we change the radius, that blue ring gets smaller. And the hand is now clipping into the sphere. 
see the radius is like how wide open your hand is. Target transform is where your hand is going to grab on the object. So say if I rotated this, then yeah, see, that would be a very messed up hand pose. That's why you set the target and then rotate it 90 degrees on the X. So it'll be just like that, because that's how you want it. Rotation limit and rotation priority buffer. I know the rotation limit is how far around your hand can rotate. Rotation priority buffer is, if I'm not mistaken, how hard it is to turn or how hard it is to rotate your hand around the rotation limit. I think um, this could be something completely different. Again, feel free to let me know, but that's just what I've gotten from this. Flippable hand pose. You can set a different flipped hand pose for the primary axis. Uh, in my case, I just want this to say the cylinder grip, but you could change this if you'd like. And I always turn on target flip on primary axis. This is so you can grip it with both your hands and grab it whichever way you want. Target flip on territory axis. I'm not too sure what this does. That might just make it so you can hold it in odd ways. Now, dynamic friction and static friction. Again, this is how much friction it has in your hand. Dynamic friction is how much friction it'll have while your hand is moving, and static is how much it'll have when your hand is just staying still. So you could set these to whatever you like. The limit is how far apart these blue rings are and how much you can slide your hand along this capsule. So if I set this up 0.22, then see it's way too far apart and your hand could slide way past the uh, cylinder. Has cap A and has cap B. Always keep these on or else your hand can go past these like blue rings. Ignore flip on Z. Again, another ignored setting. I don't really use too often. Rotation friction multiplier. This is another thing that can be subjective. I'm pretty sure So just play around with this one. I usually have it at 0.5 aspect ratio is 0.3 um, Another thing I don't play with too often uh, Actually these bottom three adjust these as you will you can play with these but these are things I am still myself learning Honestly, these anything above um, aspect ratio is probably good enough for your capsule grip or cylinder grip. Yeah, feel free to play with these values as much as you'd like. These are kind of just the baseline for most things used in the game. With the capsule out of the way, we can now move on to the sphere. The sphere is very simple. It's even more simple than the capsule. So if you go down to grips, again, you'll see most of these options are like exactly the same, except for the bottom where it says sphere options. Again, these are subjective. These won't break anything. So you can play with these as you'd like and dynamic friction and static friction are the same thing with the capsule grip. Dynamic if your hand is moving, static if your hand is staying still, how much friction does it have? That's really all for the sphere grip. The box grip is where it gets advanced though. So as you can see, it's mostly the same up until box grip options. This took me a while to understand, but let me explain it in the way that it makes sense to me. Uh, let's go over these options first. Sandwich size, I always set it to 0.15. Edge padding is 0.1, face inset distance 0, and face depth 0. Again, these are for more advanced uh, face grips. These could probably modify the way the face grips look. Sandwich hand pose, of course, set that to box sandwich grip. And then can be sandwich grab, you can either turn that on or off, depending if you want that. You can do this for all of these, whether it's edge, corner, or face, you can turn them on or off as you'd like. Uh, but you do have to set the values for them all. At least in my experience, they can break if you don't. Edge hand pose, box edge grip, and then set the edge hand pose radius to be 0.05. Corner hand pose, box corner grip, again 0.05 for the radius. And face hand pose, set it to box face grip with the radius of 1. Those are just uh, things you really have to memorize. I don't even memorize these half the time, so feel free to take a screenshot once you set it up. And then the box grip face options is where it gets advanced. So let's look at the gizmo for a second. So the green represents the Y in Unity. The Z is the blue arrow and the red is the X axis. Uh, it's also up here if you don't remember. Y is green, red is X, Z is blue. See where it says everything? You can usually just set these to everything, everything, everything. Force grab face is negative X. Force grab top, positive Y. But let's say you just wanted to grab the top of this cube, for example. In the enabled faces, 
you would do nothing and you would set it to positive y because the green arrow is the y axis and it's pointing up so that would be positive y also it's the it's similar for enabled edges and corners but they give you two axes for edge as you can see positive x positive y negative x positive y so on so let's say you wanted to grab this corner right here in the middle of y and z you would go to enable nothing enabled faces set it to nothing and you would set it to positive y positive z so see positive y is right here positive z is right here so it do right in between those right here so this is where you'd edge grab it at and for enabled corners this gets even more advanced because it gives you three options but the simplest way i can explain this is as you can see, we are on the positive side of this gizmo. So X is this way, Z is this way, Y is this way. It's getting like the average. It's pretty much getting the average of all three of these. And then there's an invisible arrow in the middle pointing to this corner. So this would be positive X, positive Y, positive Z. If we just wanted to grab this corner. So just think of this, think of an invisible arrow coming out of the middle of this gizmo, pointing to this corner. But what if we wanted something more advanced, like this corner over here, the opposite corner? Then in that case, it would be negative x, positive z, positive y. I hope that makes sense. I tried to explain that in a way that I understood it. But yeah, it's very, very useful once you figure it out. Also, be sure to reference the box collider here. So the cube grip box collider, reference it here, or this box grip uh, won't work without the reference, so be sure to reference it. All right, and for the last one, this is the most simple grip of them all. This is the target grip. This is all the main options, and there's no extra options because this does not have anything procedural going on. This is solely just the one grip. Um, this will always grab right at the target, right here there's no multiple sides there's no spinning there's no edges it always grabs on the one grip target this is what's used for guns and things like melee weapons and stuff like that i'll go over one more thing okay so on this cube grip we have a simple grip events now what this does is it's like ult events but it is triggered instead of a instead of being triggered by like touching something or passing through something it is triggered by a button press so like index down menu tap on attach or detach on index down i have it set to cube x and cube y which are just two meshes which are these representing uh the negative x and positive y axis so whenever you press the trigger these turn off and whenever you press the menu, they get turned on. So that's pretty much simple grip events. If you want something to happen when you press the trigger or something when you happen to tap the menu button or when you grab it or when you let go of it. It's very basic, but sometimes it can be very powerful. Now I can show you these things in game. I will say I recorded some of this yesterday. So this was broken because I forgot you have to reference. This is something I do often, so try to learn from my mistakes. You always have to reference the grip in the simple grip events right here, or the simple grip events just won't work. So be sure to reference the grip right here. In my case, it's the box grip. So yeah, just be sure to do that. It didn't work in my demonstration yesterday. Yeah, same with this one. Another thing you can learn from is I forgot to put a collider on a target grip, which is common since it's literally just one point but they need to have a collider of course so be smart don't be like me and uh yeah i'll show these off in game and that'll conclude the video all right so here they are all in game with that one's broken nice anyways uh in game this is what they all feel like also i figured out um last video i got something wrong your hand stays within the blue like circles that you saw in engine it's not based on the index fingers so i got that wrong last time but yeah everything works you can spin the the sphere collider or the sphere grip and also the force grabbing is off on the sphere grip it's also like that on apollo i'm not too sure why and the box grip it works as you can see now it's not big enough to have 
for the corner grips and stuff to work. Okay, so this is a good example for like the enabled the enabled faces on box grips thing. So it's positive Y, positive Z, and also negative Z. So you can grab it on both sides for edge grips. Same with up here. Also, for scripts, if they're doing something like this, I think you can mess around with the radius to fix that, if I'm not mistaken. 